Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier. I make content for YouTube, but I'm a gamer first, a nerd second, and always an early adopter of tech. The best graphics with the best resolution always come at a cost. The bleeding edge as it were. You need the best graphics card to get the best performance, and there's no way around it, you have to pay. There's been some information from NVIDIA about the next generation of graphics cards known as the 30 series. I want you to be prepared for it, and I want you to understand why I want one despite running a 2080 Ti. NVIDIA's announced that it's going to be holding the much-awaited GTC 2020 Keynote online on the 14th of May, which is pretty soon. It's going to be released 9 Eastern on the company's YouTube as a pre-recorded info dump. I'll link up the channel in case you're not subscribed, and I'm also going to post it to my Twitter. Some thought it would be the tech release of the 3080 known as Ampere. There are also some that think it might be the release of the professional cards. However, even if they only announce the professional cards, we'll be able to see the specifications. With that, the general consensus is that they'll have a better idea of the future performance of the RTX cards. Those are still due to release in August of this year. It's believed that the release is going to be on a 7 nanometer process. I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole and try to explain that. The TLDR is that the process has evolved so that the transistor is 7 nanometers. The smaller the process, the less power and the density goes up. If you'd like, search for Moore's Law. Although that cycle has already been broken, the information is still relevant. The new cards are set to release for the same price as the cards they replace, so the 3080 Ti should be at the same release price as the 2080 Ti from years ago. The new cards are said to be 10-20% to stronger, which doesn't sound like a lot. However, they have reported four times more RT cores, which are dedicated to processing ray tracing. You may remember that ray tracing when active absolutely tanked performance, despite adding greatly to the scene. I'm truly excited to see ray tracing within playable frames on a 4K display. So aside from simply wanting it, I'm also upgrading for three main reasons. Obviously, I like seeing the game in its best intended form that the developers make it. Their time and effort was invested into detailed scenes, lighting, animations, and physics. Second, when I switched from 2K to 5120 by 1440, my frames tanked. Hard. I upgraded from a 2080, which was doing fine, to a 2080 Ti. That greatly improved my frame situation within Star Citizen, but for very high-paced FPS games, my idea of playability is still 80 and above, and I'm not really getting that. And most important, the third reason is you. As a Star Citizen content creator, I would like to publish the highest quality. I can't really do much about the dumpy b-roll that the official CIG guys give us because they still publish in HD, but for my own game footage, I can capture what I see and show you my actual performance. I do have to upsample CIG footage by 200%, but I don't have to do that with mine. So in closing, I'm gonna mention one more benefit. Upgrading my graphics card will help me render. I render at 4K 60 frames at bit rates that do take a lot of computer power. This workload compiles pixel by pixel, frame by frame. 8,294,000, 60 times per second for minutes of runtime. 30 billion pixels per minute of footage, 2 gigabytes per minute to upload. That should happen quickly so that I can upload quickly to you. So because of this, not only CPU, but a better GPU renders quicker. All of this is very exciting. I'm going to keep you posted about what's coming, when it's coming out, and if I can get my hands on it, I'm going to tell you how it improves my gaming experience in Star Citizen so that you can choose wisely. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Please share the content if you enjoyed. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.